Meanwhile, as Russia continues to batter Ukraine and the war enters the third month, uh, Russianization of uh, Melitopol is underway. Red Soviet victory flags have been hoisted at many places. This exercise is being carried out uh, in all captured territories because just having the Russian flag made Russians look like invaders. Here's the crowd report. We are back in Melitopol two weeks and we see a huge change at the Freedom Square here in Melitopol. You can see the communist flag going up where once the Ukrainian flag flew proudly. Below it you can see the ribbon of George which represents military valor and is a symbol and sign for Russia uh, and Russian military prowess. So that George, uh, the, the, the St. George orange and black ribbon is visible. This very same place had Melitopol written in Russian and now all Ukrainian. So very clear message over here that this Melitopol city, while not a part of the Donbass region, is a part of the erstwhile Soviet. And so the people over here who are of Russian origin, many of them, are not only being asked to, uh, to, to show their loyalty to the Russian flag, which flies right here on the, uh, atop the city center. Earlier it was the cultural center, the Taurus Shevchenko Center. That's the Russian flag. But a message to the people of Melitopol that it's not just the Russian flag, but also the big red communist flag. That's going up to show that this place was a part of Russia and in all probability will be a part of Russia. With the journalist Satya Raut Ray in Melitopol, Geeta Mohan for India Today. The blue and yellow of this fountain has completely changed. It's now aqua green and blue. The colors of Ukrainian flag absolutely removed from this entire Melitopol area. That's the Freedom Square and you can hear the Russian songs, Russian national songs, victory songs, military songs. Katyusha playing right behind me, uh, a song that has been an inspiration for all the officers who have been here and who have been fighting. Melitopol certainly does not seem like it is going to go back to Ukraine. The colors have changed and so has the atmosphere here in the city of Melitopol. With the journalist Satya Raut Ray in Melitopol, Geeta Mohan for India Today. Ukrainian officials still manage the Zafrosia nuclear plant. Russia's uh, Rosatom representatives are demanding daily reports from the Zafrosia nuclear power plant management on confidential issues regarding the operation of the nuclear power plant. Here's more. This is a world exclusive. India today is at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant in Energodar. This now is under Russian control. There are two operators, uh, reactors that are operational here in uh, Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. This is the largest in Europe and sixth largest in the world. So very important critical infrastructure now under the control of Russia. We do not really know whether if Russia is going to hand it over back uh, to the uh, Ukrainian side. But what we are told is that in the reactors inside, uh, there were reports that there were damages to the first reactor. But uh, as we see when we were entering the reactor, the plant, the reactors are, have been untouched. It's the training facility right at the gate, at the entrance of the uh, plant uh, that, that uh, came under attack in the crossfire and the damage is quite visible. But over here, when we see the plant, uh, there isn't any damage, which uh, clearly shows that uh, the attack and the crossfire did not take place within the facility and the facility is uh, secure. We are also told that uh, even now the reactors are being, uh, uh, be being operational and being uh, operated by uh, the Ukrainian uh, 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 professionals and uh, who were a part of this entire facility. They have not left. They are still there. They are still working inside. We will be going inside and showing you exactly how the two reactors over here of the six blocks that we see are operating. Vidhuti journalist Satya Raut Ray at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant in Anurgadar, Geeta Mohan for India Today.
This is one of the most sensitive sites when it comes to the war between Russia and Ukraine. Russia is in control of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. But should there be a fight to reclaim this territory, this area, this sensitive area could pose severe threat not just to Ukraine but also to Russia. Therefore, uh, the Russians now are under are, are completely have taken control of the power plant, but the machinations and the workings and the functioning is still under Ukrainian control. How they're going to really manage and balance this is something we'll have to wait and see. There are reports that Ross Atom certainly will be sending its own uh, officials to take over the plant. When that happens is something we'll have to wait and see. We came from the other side and if Satya can show us uh, the, the entrance is where a training center was completely caught uh, 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 under fire and uh, was destroyed. But apart from that destruction, all through the stretch that we entered, the main gate up till now, this is uh, block one and block two, uh, there, we've not seen any destruction. We'll again have to wait and see what happens when we go inside. But right now, the buildings over here, do not show any signs of any destruction or or any uh, signs of uh, fight, gun battle, shelling that could have taken place over here. So a very sensitive area being handled rather sensitively by both sides. Uh, there has been no crossfire shelling or fight over here. And one only hopes that it remains this way, whether if Zaporizhia nuclear power plant remains with Ukraine or goes to Russia. The fact that it is sensitive and it could pose great and grave danger is the most important point over here. With the journalist Satya Rautre at the Zaporozhia nuclear power plant, Geeta Mohan for India Today. This is the training center that was uh, that came under the crossfire between Ukraine and Russian forces. The damage is quite visible and this was the reason why uh, there was a huge alarm about what the safety and security of the nuclear power, power plant is really going to be. Massive damage over there, if you can see the building, but it is far away uh, outside the gate of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, which is right in front of the training center. But that first came under attack. The strategy in all probability was that, that if that is the extent of damage that can be done, imagine if something happens over here, what will be the fate of the people and the region. And that's why, in all probability, we saw a very quick withdrawal of the Ukrainian forces with the Russians having taken control of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. With the journalist Satya Rautre in Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, Geeta Mohan for India Today.